I want to apologize in advance on this uh, video review. You're not going to have a whole lot of onboard driving footage on this, and there's a reason for that. While we were filming some of the early parts of it, the mount, which we had uh, our, our camera, fell off. In fact, we can see if I can dig around and find it here in the bag. Well, this doesn't look in too bad a shape, our new Sony camera. I don't know if it still works, but the, uh, the mount, uh, the mount uh, failed and came off the car at about 60 miles an hour. So we'll see. But that's why you're not going to see a lot of onboard footage on, for this video. We apologize. We'll have, it, uh, have something for our next one. We had the opportunity to drive the Scion FRS back in May out in Pahrump in Las Vegas for the intro. Now we have it for a little bit longer term. We want to find out, were our initial impressions correct? Is the Scion FRS a really good sports car in the old mode? Or is it something that's flawed? Well, here today on 10 Minute Test Drive and rumblestrip.net on a very blustery fall day, we're going to have a longer look at it, the Scion FRS. on FRS. It was back in May, as we said, that we went out to Las Vegas to have a drive in this thing for the first time out at uh, Pahrump, and then uh, the drive from Pahrump back to Las Vegas where they, where Scion and Toyota showed off this car. Our initial impressions were really good with the car. It's, uh, it's a return to the old ways, a return to the old school. You know, a lot of people talk about the old ways and the old school, but they don't have a clue what that's all about. This is a car that is about lightweight and about handling. It's not about power, although it could use a little more and we will certainly spend a little time talking about that. But what this car is, it's light and it's nimble. It's the way that sports cars used to be back in the day. Uh, look at a lot of the classic sports cars, especially the entry level style or the entry level uh, sports cars that got where people could actually afford to drive them or buy and drive them um, that, you know, like you said, are your classics from the, from the 50s, the 60s, and even the early 70s. Uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so, it's been all about power. It's been how, you know, being wider, being uh, more power, more torque. What's the lap time at the Nürburgring? It really hasn't been about, is it fun to drive? And at the end of the day, I don't care if a car does five minutes around the Nürburgring. If it's a pile of crap to drive, I don't want it. I'd rather have a car that takes nine minutes to get around the ring and is a hoot to drive than something that's going to set the ultimate lap time. Because unless all you do is drive on track days or spend your time on racing simulators on Forza and GT5 and whatever else and you know bragging rights are all about oh I got this lap time and all I got about this lap time without actually ever getting out in a car and driving it you know well then I understand why your views in the world are skewed because you've had never you know your 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 reference points are artificial you know it's how a car feels on a racing simulator and how it feels in the real world are two completely different things and one of the great things that this car does is it lets you feel exactly what's going on. You definitely feel the body move. You feel the tires begin to slide. And given that these are the same tires that come on a Toyota Prius, they actually grip pretty well, and surprisingly well, to be honest with you. So this is a sports car, and I use the word sports car, not muscle car, not performance car. It's a sports car, and it does a really good job. Now, elephant in the room is the amount of power in this car. It has 200 horsepower. It only has 151 foot-pounds of torque. Could the car use more power? Yes. What it really could use is more torque. And 
we would say 50 more horsepower and about 100 more foot-pounds of torque would be just about perfect. It would allow the car to have a little more oomph, certainly better drive out of the corners without really um, cranking this thing up because it just, well, we're going to run through the gears here for you real quick and you can kind of hear it, it labors a little bit when you get on it. As you get towards the 7,000, 6, 7,000, it just, you know, and there's some intermediate time in there as well that just, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not, the acceleration isn't snappy. I mean, it just doesn't like bang, bang, bang. You aren't pulling off gears like that. Of course, that's part of not having enough, you know, having as much power as it just can't overcome um, physics. Sorry. So, you know, it is what it is. There's certainly aftermarket companies that are building systems. There are tuners who've already come up with systems. In fact, um, here in Detroit, there's one down in Toledo, uh, about a little over an hour south of us. They've already come up with a 400 horsepower turbo kit, and it's gone 1130s at a buck 20 something and change. Just search on the internet for it's it's in a it's in a uh, Subaru BRZ, but you know it's in, it's the same same thing so Subaru BRZ turbo or something like that and I'm sure you'll you'll come up with it or fastest fastest BRZ in the world will probably queue it up for you on YouTube given that this car is only twenty six thousand dollars spending a little on uh, some aftermarket stuff is certainly going to be affordable for most people um, it's a uh, it's a price tag that you know the average person can afford the payment on and still have some money left over to personalize it so, you know, in that sense, it's, a, it's also a success in that way. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun to drive and people can customize it or personalize it in their own manner. All right, so let's get in sort of the nuts and bolts of this thing and the meat and potatoes and talk about what is it to drive. Um, it's a lot of fun to drive. It really is. Uh, it's, it feels very light. It does. It, I mean, the steering is very direct really good feedback even given tires that are substandard um, it's quiet um, not overly quiet but you know it's not obnoxious as some flat four uh, engines can be and um, you know, we spent some time and did a did a loop and drove up uh, about 90 miles, came back. And seats are, are, are great. The ride is good. In fact, I love these seats and love to take these seats and put it in my personal Mustang. Uh, obviously, that's, you know, not going to happen. But that's how good the seats are. They're nice. They're comfortable. You know, and even me as a middle-aged person with a little bit of uh, girth, not, you know, okay, not fat, but middle-aged spread, uh, I fit in these things comfortably. So I've got no complaints about the seats. This is the automatic, not the manual. That's what was delivered. So is the automatic okay? Yes, it's okay. Now you go into manual mode and you pull gears up and down. And for the most part, it's responsive. Although there have been a few times when we've called for, let's say, going from third to second gear. And you have to hit down twice because it doesn't initially uh, want to go into second when you call for second gear. Why? Um, it's a programming thing. It's not like we were going to be banging it off a limiter on that. It just, it just is. Uh, so overall, do I like this car? Yes, I do. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's really good value. It's something that you could live with day to day and have a lot of fun with. Is it a car that... Is it the car that we would personally choose? Well, if it was a turbo variant, it would be under serious consideration, honestly, because it does have, you know, even if it doesn't have 500 horsepower, um, it would be fun because it only weighs 2,800 pounds, and you don't necessarily need 400 horsepower or 500 horsepower when you only have 2,800 pounds to move around to have a lot of fun, to be enjoyable today 
to drive day in and day out. So we'll see. We know that um, Subaru is working on an STI version of this thing, which will probably be a turbo. Is Cyan going to have the equivalent? Um, don't know at this point. So who's this geared towards? The young crowd? Because that's really what Cyan's supposed to be about, is gearing towards a younger crowd. Um, the problem is, I don't think the younger crowd is going to like this car, because they've been raised on Gran Turismo and Forza, and it's all about the stat sheet, okay? If, you know, this GTR, well, it has 600 horsepower, well, that's a pile of crap, because this one has 800 horsepower. The thing is, the first time any one of those keyboard ninjas took a car around a corner with that much power, they'd wrap themselves around a tree, flat and simple. You know, racing on a, like I said, ra being on, driving on a simulator and driving in the real world are two very, very different things. This really appeals to someone, I would say, oh, at the age of 40 and over. Someone who grew up in the 70s and even in the 80s who remembers lightweight, nimble sports cars. That really you could have more fun with and be far more enjoyable in the real world because it's something that you can drive at seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, at you know just barely triple digit speeds. Um, you really work where you really work it hard, where you really get to find out what it's all about without necessarily worrying about being tossed into jail immediately. In something like you know a modern supercar, where unless you're on a racetrack, you get to drive it at two tenths, three tenths at its hardest. You know what's the point in in some ways. Um, sure. Does everyone want to drive a, a Ferrari 458 or an F12? Yeah, absolutely. Can you really experience, experience what that car is all about unless you get to hammer it on a racetrack? I don't know. Last Ferrari we drove was a 328, and I can tell you driving on the street was, eh, okay, I got to drive a Ferrari. That's about it. Um, so this will be an interesting car to see what happens with uh, from Scion and also from from Subaru as well and what their what their results will be. I like the car. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think if you get in and drive it, you're really going to enjoy this thing because it is a return to the old ways, stripping everything down. There's no, there's really nothing here that doesn't need to be here. Um, are there things that need to be improved? Yes. Uh, first thing is you're going to want to replace the stereo because this Pioneer unit in here is it's just not good. Uh, not necessarily from a sound. I mean, the sound's okay. Just the interface is really lousy and really expect more from some someone like Pioneer on that. Um, but, you know, that's an easy upgrade. That's really uh, not a big deal. Uh, the automatic is, like we said, okay, it has some issues. The back seat is kind of pointless, to be honest with you, but, you know, Insuring a 2 plus 2 is a whole lot better than insuring a two-seater. And certainly you can uh, make that point to the board to sell it, you know, to, to be even be able to sell it uh, much better. You know, the trunk is okay. It's pretty pretty small, but it's serviceable. All in all, good. Like it. And, yeah, what else you got to say? Go out and drive one of these things. It's a hoot.